Um, and let's start by talking about what hydrogen sulfide actually is. Right? In our shrimp tanks, for example, hydrogen sulfide is a toxic gas, right? And this toxic gas is formed in compacted soils where waste has been allowed to build up, right? So what is actually happening here, guys, is there's a type of bacteria that lives in the soil, right? That is, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It's anaerobic bacteria, but is this anaerobic bacteria lives in anoxic conditions, right? Which means that the soil is so compacted and full of waste that there is no oxygen able to get through and penetrate, right? And what this actually means is this bacteria is then able to produce this very highly toxic gas called hydrogen sulfide. So one of the main causes of hydrogen sulfide forming like this is because there is a lack of actual flow in the tank right and why that is key guys is because your whole filtration system is built on flow right so if you have a lack of flow to certain areas you're going to actually have a build up of waste in these areas right so it's very noticeable in some of my tanks I did it last week where I pulled out a decoration for example and there was a plume of mulm that came up as well right so these are hot spots for hydrogen sulfide to form is in areas like this where there's low flow right so you want to try and minimize the amount of stuff that you have in your tanks that reduces flow but that's something that we'll probably cover in future videos but um, in general guys you want areas that are fully flowing with water because if you do this guys right for example if you uh, go into one of your tanks you think it looks beautiful you have bits of philandra and you have big clumps of moss and stuff right go into your tank right and start to remove these items just take them out take all your moss out and you will probably be shocked at the amount of build up of waste that is present underneath all these items right and all of this stuff in a soft water beach shrimp tank because this is what this video is about today but it does apply to other aquariums but because we're specifically talking about beach shrimp tanks is the issue here is beach shrimp tanks are different because they're highly susceptible to uh, nitrate poisoning ammonia poisoning and um, hydrogen sulfide poisoning right so all these things are amplified in bee shrimp tanks compared to your normal neo tanks as an example so this is why you want to try and keep your tanks as open as possible because this allows water to flow and um, if you do this guys right just for example as i said if you take it moss on your bus of philandra you don't even have to physically suck it out with a siphon or anything like that what you can do right is just make sure you have enough flow come back the next day and high chances all that mulm and stuff that was built up there already is gone because it's already been swept up by the current that's got in there and it's actually been pulled into the filter where the filter has been able to do its job all right guys so if you have um, a situation where you have a chronic waste buildup in the substrate that is where it's different and you should intervene and do it right and i would say test your ph first if your ph is quite low this what i'm going to suggest next is well worth doing right you're going to go in there and you're going to gravel vac your substrate right but this is always better to do if you have no babies in the tank because obviously you, you will suck up the babies and kill them but if it's a chronic issue the, if the ph is good do this right and your tank will be much much better for afterwards right we're going to we're actually going to show you this today as well in a clip because um, I have a tank over here. I actually have three tanks where I had an issue with, with hydrogen sulfide buildup. And one of them was quite shocked because it had a lot of babies. It was my blue bolt tank on the on the floor here. There was loads of babies in here, guys, right? And, and the babies, there were so many of them, they stopped growing. But then I was noticing that there was, there was even after I removed them, there was no more babies. There was, the, the shrimp had stopped breeding. I was seeing the odd dead one. And then when I was looking at the substrate, I thought, yeah, this substrate kind of looks compacted. And what I did, guys, was I started to gravel vac the actual soil. And surprise, surprise, there was bubbles came up from the substrate itself. And because I was siphoning it like this with my head over the bucket like this, I got a strong whiff of rotten egg smell. And that's a sure sign if you smell this in your tanks that there is a hydrogen sulfide buildup, right? So you, if you're looking for bubbles escaping from stuff from the substrate, specifically under... Uh, decorations and, and places where you feed the shrimp under feeding dishes is quite a hot spot as well for hydrogen sulfide buildup and yeah, you will get that rotten egg smell or fishy smell and uh, yeah it is not good you're doing the right thing you're going to go in there with your gravel vac and you're going to clean it out make sure you get rid of all that waste buildup in the bottom because I, 
Uh, guys, I've noticed it specifically in one style that, ha that I have ADA um, gold. It is very crumbly, right? So you will get away with gravel vac in this a little bit, but eventually, I think eventually it's going to go back to the same problem, right? So how do you fix this? The, the, the way to fix this, guys, is to have a soil that is, has a better structure and is solid. Right, so you're wanting a grain size that is at least what, 3 to 5 mil. Uh, if you go for powdered uh, substrates, then you're going to have the, an issue with this problem all the time because that is the thing that we're trying to combat here is a lack of water flow through the actual substrate itself. And um, if there's no water flow, there's no oxygen getting to these areas. Right, so this type of bacteria in your tank isn't always bad right? for the nitrogen cycle, for example. You actually want some of this in your tank. Right? You can't have just all one type and not the other right? because they do different jobs. Right? But you can't have it where all these toxic gas bubbles are coming out of your substrate. Right? So yeah, we'll fix that today. All right, guys, I want to show you an example here. I do apologize for the glare. My room is very, very bright. Right? So this is my actual crayfish tank right and you can see here that the substrate is quite deep at the front right so I can kind of guarantee just to give you an idea here how thick this is that is a good because remember this will be down to the base here that is a good what seven centimeters eight centimeters thick probably over here it's closer to ten um, crayfish tend to dig burrows and they like to pile up stuff so this is where uh, most of the stuff gets piled up and you're going to get um, anoxic conditions in here with anaerobic bacteria producing hydrogen and sulfide right so this is where I'm probably going to be able to show you here because this tank is well known for having this build up right and why it is different than this type of tank guys is because this is a more of a neutral pH tank so the issue isn't quite as bad I've turned off the filtration at the back just so you can see but otherwise this tank is very very well filtered lots of um, oxygen going through it and stuff so this is why this doesn't matter so much but let me just show you all the same we are going to actually probe the soil and we're going to see if anything comes up right so we just move some stuff a little bit oh big gas bubble I'm not sure if that came up on your side that was a really big gas bubble actually let's see if I probe in here with the barbecue skewer yeah that is definitely hydrogen sulfide because I could smell it Oh, there's another bubble on the other side. I'm hoping that some of this actually comes out on camera so you guys can actually see something. Yeah, I thought there would be more than this because anytime I try and do this in the past, there's always been a lot. Oh, that was not. All right, let's go over this side because there was a big gas bubble came out from here. A little bit again. Let's go over this side. I can see the crayfish on this side. The glare is so bad. A bit under here, nothing. Oh, there's a lot of gas on that side there. You see it? Ow! Ow! Crayf little crayfish is biting me, the back. Now, you see the bubbles? This is me just moving things that are lying on the ground right so there's not not as many as we thought not as much gas but just to show you what it looks like in a situation like this all right shrimp so this is one of the bee shrimp tanks that i had um anoxic conditions in right and what's interesting with this is uh, the soil is quite thin at the front but it goes back to about three or four centimeters now i did gravel vacuum this tank last week so i highly doubt that there's anything left in here to bubble up but yeah let's have a little poke and see whether Barbecue skewer at the back there. Nothing. Nothing else. Right, so I did actually gravel back this one. And there's nothing here, right? So that is good. Alright guys, let's go over here. Right? We're gonna do a tank that I have had a few issues in, right? As in where you I've added the shrimp and they haven't bred and I was getting the odd death right and then when I started to think more about this hydrogen sulfide thing I decided to gravel back the tank and yes it was horrific with bubbles 
and with uh, just debris built up in the soil, right? So I think it's important to note as well that this tank is also an ADA gold tank. And as I said previously, I've noticed with this soil specifically that it crumbles into very fine particles, which will it block itself up eventually, right? So that is the problem with that, right? So I'm going to show you how we fix it as now as well. We're going to use a little gravel vac like this, and this is just something that I've made from a larger syringe, a piece of pipe like this and we're going to go in we're going to control the flow we're going to start our scythe and we're going to control the flow with our finger on the end like this just releasing up and down like this to let more water out stop it let more water out and stop it and this will be evident by the soil rising on the inside and then when i don't want it to go any further i stop it like this and it settles we move on to the next part and this is how you do it right and yeah guys if you have a tank as we mentioned before as well if you have a tank that is under 5.8 Right, and this tank is quite low, it's still under 5, right, so there's no point in me abandoning this tank. What I need to do is actually clean the soil, because this is one of the ones where I put a lot of powder foods in the beginning. And, yeah, you know how I feel about powder foods. Now, I add my powder foods to the start as a layer underneath, and then that is it. Because anything else that you put into the tank is actually, if it's not eaten, it's actually just filling the substrate, blocking it up, you're producing your hydrogen sulphide and your shrimp become lethargic and yeah, they die. So let's get over here, Mosh. I'll give you an example of me graveling the substrate. Graveling, vacuuming the substrate, oh my God. Let me show you how we do this. Right, so you have your syringe like this, or guys, what also works really, really well is a smaller cola bottle. You can see here, right, so this soil here is just full of detritus. And this tank isn't even that old. Right, and in situations like this, you can see where the soil is, is all compacted here. You're going to get an anoxic conditions and an anaerobic bacteria are going to live in here and they're going to produce gases that are toxic to your shrimp. Right, so this is kind of like a short fix for this type of soil. As I said, this is ADA Amazonia Gold. But in general, guys, you want to buy a soil where the grain size is between 3 and 5 centimetres, 3 and 5 millimetres even. And yeah, you want it so it's not crumbling like this. This is, a, this is a specific problem with this specific soil, right? So let's see. As I said, get started scything. We're going to use our finger to control the flow. You can hear it. You can't really see it, but you can hear it like this. And we're going to start to actually just hover above the soil like this and let water flow through. And you'll see how much muck is actually in this. You can push it down, do the same again, release, let this, the soil drop back down like this and you continue to let water out so it sucks all that crap that's in there out. You see how this is relatively clean? And you move on to the next bit. All that crap, all the fines, all the powders, all the food that was never eaten is now, the gravel is now clean. You see how much better that looks? It's not full of junk. Same again the next bit. You can go all the way to the base. Isn't that a big difference, guys? Let's do this bit here. And that is also clean. You see how, how much of a difference it makes just doing this little bit of gravel vac in here? On this section. So this section now is actually clean, right? So. In this tank specifically, I just have this back area here to do, and that is it. And then this tank is ready again for us to condition shrimp to go into. Right, shrimp blue, as I'm actually filling this tank, because we're going to put some fresh water in here, that we've actually uh, made up a few days ago. Basically, our water change is done, our gravel vac is done. The other things that we can do here, guys, is we can actually add hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to add 10 mil. And we can leave the filtration on because there's there's no shrimp or anything in this tank. Leave it on, it's going to get a good cling. And I like to use like a turkey baster for this amount of stuff. So let's see. Will it even, is there even 10 mil in this bottle? It's that 5 mil, I have to do it twice. All right, what did we say? What did we say 10 mil? So I put in roughly 5 before, so. Let's just add this straight to the water. As I said, there's no shrimp in here. We can go a little bit more than normal. We also have a soaking oxidator in here. 
Right, and the, the purpose of all this, guys, is for us to add oxygen to the water and it will help break down any hydrogen sulfide that is present, okay? Alright guys, let's go over one more time what you need to do if you see lethargic shrimp in your tank that you suspect has been caused by hydrogen sulfide poisoning. The first thing you want to do, right, is you want to have a look at your soil and you want to decide if you can gravel vac, right? If you don't have any young weeds, you probably don't if you have this condition, you want to gravel vacuum your substrate. This will actually do a water change for you at the same time, so that's two birds with one stone. And then you want to think about things like um, clearing clutter out of your tank because this will help with um, debris not settling into your substrate, it'll be sucked up into your uh, filtration instead. So, so float and, and keeping things spacious and open is important in a bee shrimp tank. And so you can also use a thing called an associating oxidator if you have them because they help to oxidize the hydrogen sulfide that is in the water as well. And so it also helps to oxygenate. As we're talking about oxygen, you can actually add an air stone to your tank. Right, I have a big one in my bottom tank here because I suspect that we're getting a little bit of a buildup of bad stuff in the substrate. And this helps to suck all the stuff out of the soil and up into the filters. Right. So there, guys, there you have it. There's my video for today on hydrogen sulfide toxicity in a bee shrimp tank. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully it has been helpful. And guys, I'll see you on the next one. Hope shrimp you. Woo!